The state television company Western Armenia represents the most important news for today. Good day. Today's broadcast. To surrender Tavush Corridor in order not to talk about Zangezur Corridor. Samir Sahramanyan gave interview to Le Figaro. Erdogan and Natanayu used the term genocide and to blame each other. The Russian-Turkish honeymoon seems to be ending. Ruben Melkonian. The people of Artsvashen initiated a signature. Golden Hands on April 7 at Tumanyan's Art. Encyclopedia Armenian Geography of Turkey. During a briefing held on March 27, Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said that Russia does not use the term Zangezur Corridor, but is talking about the route that connects Baku with the western region of Nakhichevan through this unique region of Armenia. Officials of uh, Eastern Armenia said that the Zangezu Corridor has not been opened for three years because the leadership of Eastern Armenia allegedly does not agree with the extraterritorial conditions. Alan Simonian even mentioned yesterday that the handing over of Tavush village is somehow related to Zangezur Corridor. We will allow the Tavush Corridor to be created so that we will not be forced to open the Zangezur Corridor, actually mentioned Alan Simonian. Here it is appropriate to remember that in the spring of last year, when Moscow and Baku installed an illegal checkpoint in Berzor Corridor, closing the only road and communication channels of Artsakh, the same people said that they would not demand to restore the extraterritorial status of the Berzor Corridor, so that Aliyev would not demand the same status for Zangezur Corridor. Berzor Corridor was invented in order to block and occupy Artsakh at the right time. Now, in order to separate Armenia from Georgia, they need the Tavush Corridor, with the exit of Lori. The Zangir Corridor from the beginning aimed to eliminate the Armenia-Iranian border, but it will happen at the very end. In a conversation with the French Le Figaro, Samve Sharamanyan, the leader of the occupied Artsakh, referring to the rumors about whether there is a connection between the election of the fifth president of Artsakh and the attacks subsequent to it, denied reminding that the Azerbaijans were already accumulating troops on the contact line. It was obvious that after a nine-month siege in order to weaken us, they were going to attack, he said. To the question whether there is a state and a government in exile, Sharamanyan answered, Yes, the office uh, where I am hosting you in Yerevan are located the office of the President of Artsakh and the offices of judicial and legislative structures. Parliamentarians can gather here to vote, to sign an AU decree in October, which stipulates that all government ministers remain in their position on a voluntary basis. Answering to the question about a possible return, Shara Manyan said, In the current situation, it is unrealistic to think about returning to our territory that is occupied by Azerbaijan. In Baku, Azerbaijans are taught from school that Armenians are enemies. It will take years to change the mentality of Azerbaijan people and for peaceful coexistence between neighbors to become possible. And I am thinking here as much about the Armenians of Armenia as about the Armenians of Artsakh. How can the authorities of Yerevan consider their country safe when some parts of its territory are already occupied by Azerbaijans and the leaders of Baku publicly declared their rights to other territories? He concluded, I understood that the document to dissolve Artsakh was illegal, but it was the only way to save our camp patriots, Shahra Manyan added. Due to the disparity of forces, we did not have the opportunity to show resistance. That's why we quickly established contact with the Azerbaijan, so that the civilian population would be free from combat operations as much as possible. After 12 hours of negotiations, we ended martial operations. The very next day, the citizens of Artsakh asked to evacuate to Armenia, fearing mass murders by the evenders. Thus, we started the second round of negotiations so that their evacuation goes as smoothly as possible, he said. The editor-in-chief California Courier newspaper, Harut Sasunyan, read in his new article that politics creates strange policies. Israel and Turkey are one of those odd political friends. From the beginning, there was a certain basis in their partnership, which can be more correctly called mutual exploitation. Israel, surrounded by a large number of enemies of Arabian countries, needed Turkey as its political and economic ally, and an Islamic state that had established diplomatic relations with Israel in 1949. Meanwhile, Turkey needed Israel for a variety of reasons, including political support from the West, the acquisition of advanced weapons, and billions of dollars in trade. Another aspect of this alliance was that both countries denied the genocide committed against the Armenians. Turkey used its relationship with Israel to convince the powerful U.S. Jewish lobby to block the recognition of the genocide against Armenia by the U.S. Congress. 
Turkey pressured Israel to block the International Conference on the Holocaust and Genocide in Tel Aviv in 1982. And to prevent the broadcast of a documentary film about the genocide against the Armenians and the recognition of the genocide by the Knesset. Turkey went so far as to threaten its domestic Jewish community and required the chief rabbi of Constantinople to lobby American Jewish organizations on Turkey's behalf. In 2009, during the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, in presence of world leaders, Erdogan told Israel President Shimon Peres, I know very well how you kill children on the Gaza beaches. After the latest attack by Hamas on Israel, Erdogan called Hamas freedom for years and compared Netanyahu to today's Nazis Hitler, Mussolini and Stalin. In January 2024, the Israel foreign minister tweeted, Turkey's president Erdogan from a country with the history of genocide against Armenia now boats of groundless accusations against Israel. We remember the Armenians, your story speaks for itself. Israel is being protected from your barbaric allies and not being destroyed. Earlier, Netanyahu, who himself does not recognize the genocide committed against Armenians, criticized Erdogan for denying the genocide. Netanyahu wrote on his Twitter page, Israel, which adheres to the laws of war, will not accept the moral preaching of Erdogan, who supports the murders and rapists of the terrorist organization Hamas, denies the Holocaust carried out against Armenian massacres, Kurds in their own country, and eliminates regime op opponents and journalists. However, Netanyahu continues to arm Turkey's ally Baku with advanced weapons that were used in Artsakh to carry out a new genocide against Armenians. In conclusion, both Erdogan and Netanyahu should be ashamed for using the genocide against Armenian and Holocaust as a bargaining chip in their arguments. Instead of using the term genocide to blame each other, both Israel and Turkey should have recognized the genocide committed against the Armenians a long time ago in order to be among the civilized states. The Russian-Turkey honeymoon seems to be ending. The question is, can Armenia take advantage of it? Ruth Ben Melkonyan, Dean of the Faculty of Oriental Studies of Yerevan State University, said during the program with Argadi Grigorian. In Turkey, they think that Armenia can be a dummy state. In Russia, they think that where will they run to? In other words, we have bad, worst, and neutral scenarios against the background of the possible deterioration of Tur Russian-Turkish relations. There is a question. The director of Eastern Armenia today will be able to bring it to life, but the leader of Eastern Armenia does not understand this profession. Your power does not extend to that area. You are not the prime minister of Ishkhan Asar. You are not the prime minister of Verin Jermuk. You are not the prime minister of the places where the Baku army entered. Bring back those territories and say, this is army and I am the prime minister of it, Malkonyan said. In recent days, information has been spreading that the head of Astvatashen community is initiated signatures and some documents from the people of Astvatashen. According to our sources, we are talking about compensations in exchange for which an agreement should be given to give up Astvatashen, which was occupied by Baku in 1992. Mamikon Hechoyan, head of Arts Russian community, confirmed our information about the letter that they applied to the government. He noted that in order to receive answers to the question of compensation and also to the conversation and complicated issues surrounding Arts Russian, we have asked five residents to be admitted. As of yesterday, there was still no response from the government. But there is no talk of giving of Arts Russian and there cannot be said Mamikon Hechoyan. In the near future, Western Armenia TV will broadcast an extensive interview with Arts Russian community leader Mamikon Hechoyan, who is a son of Western Armenia. He is originally from Bitlis. In April 7, in the outdoor area of Tumanyas Art Cafe, the Gold Health Festival will take place. There will be an exhibition and sale during the festival. The festival will be accompanied by event, master classes, surprise gifts and hospitality. The main goal of the festival is to help gifted women of Artsakh to sell their creations and inspire them to create new ones. A monumental work was published with the perfect translation of publishers, journalist Sevan Nashanyan. The Encyclopedia Armenian Geography Turkey was published with the perfect translation by publishers, journalist Sevan Nashanyan and will surely be a useful book lovers and researchers. The main source of the book is the Illustrated Nature World Dictionary by Sukyas Yeprikyan, one of the Mekhitaryan fighters of Venice, which Yeprikyan began to publish in 1902-1907 about Armenian settlements, but left the second volume unfinished. Now Sevan Nashanyan completed that study and presented his new encyclopedia to the readers. 
The African Dictionary was about Armenian settlements within and outside the borders of Ottoman Empire at the beginning of the 20th century. With this encyclopedia, Nashanyan tried to complete the dictionary using the source used by Yeprika. In this way, important passages from the works of the outstanding personalities of the 19th century, like Injijan, Garegin, Servanzian, and Alishan, were translated into Turkish. Father Sukas Yeprikyan was born in 1873 in Akhaltsha, which at that time was under the rule of Russian Empire. He was a member of the Mkhitaryan congregation, spent a period of his life in St. Lazar Island Monastery. He died in Venice in 1952. The first volume of the encyclopedic work was published in 1902 in Venice. Then, finding great acceptance, it was republished in two parts in 1903 and 1905. The second chapter was published rather late in 1907, and the other two Two chapters were never printed. The purpose of the modern encyclopedia is to provide a list of places mentioned in Armenian history. In the work, a large space was allocated to the Caucasian countries which were under Russian rule, and historical Armenian settlements in such countries as Iran, Bulgaria, Romania, Poland, and India were also mentioned. Translator Nashanyan was content only with the articles of Yeprikian dictionary which were related to the current geography of occupied Western Armenia. For this, Yeprikian's 1,300 14-page work was reduced to 650 pages. A number of materials which Yeprikian could not finish have also been completed. In this way, more than 600 new names were added. This was all for today. Goodbye.